Good afternoon, everyone. All you have to say is wow, right? It, uh, it's a great day today. I want to welcome everybody here. You got the better event versus the Patriots being here today, so uh, welcome. We're going to start with a presentation of the colors by the Junior ROTC of South High Community High School. Please rise. The national anthem will be sung by the uh, Nelson Place School, read by Laura Colo. Please join in the singing of the national anthem. Welcome up uh, Congressman James P. McGovern and Edwin Chadwick, who was a graduate here in 1939 and a World War II veteran. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I have the, um, the pleasure of presenting uh, this brand new school, uh, the, United, uh, uh, the flag that was flown over the United States Capitol um, in special honor uh, of Nelson Place. And so I'm going pre to present this to uh, uh, Corporal Edwin H. Chadwick, um, who is a, a, a graduated from this school in 1939. Um, and served our country uh, with great distinction. So it is an honor for me to present you this flag that was flown over the Capitol in honor of this day, uh, and to also thank you for your service to our country. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And 
And let me also just say at this moment that um, this is incredible. Um, I'm so happy to be here. And I want to thank uh, all those who made this possible. I mean, the, the, uh, the, the mayor, the city manager, the city council, the school committee, um, the incredible citizens of Worcester who believe that education needs to be a priority, uh, the uh, architect, Lamro Pagano, Fontaine Brothers, Tishman Construction. I go on and on and on. Um, but this is, this is absolutely beautiful. Um, and I think this is a, 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 a statement that um, education is important, that we value our kids in this city. Um, and I also want to take one moment uh, to also thank the teachers um, who teach our kids here in the city of Worcester. Um, you know, I, I represent a lot of different communities. I've been to a lot of different schools. We are incredibly lucky that we have the teachers that we have uh, in this city. And I want to thank them too. Uh, they're the ones who produce great heroes like Corporal uh, Chadwick. And so thank you very much for having me here today. Please welcome up the Reverend Aaron Payson from the United Darien Universalist Church for the invocation. The year was 1927. And among the many important things that happened this, that year, there are three that deserve remembering today. Charles Lindbergh threw his spirit of Saint, uh, flew his spirit of St. Louis across the Atlantic that year. And Peace Bridge was dedicated connecting our Canadian brothers and sisters with those of us on this side of the bridge. And Nelson Place School opened its doors three powerfully important events. Spirit of love and learning, we beseech your presence in this place made new, reflecting a nine-decade commitment to education, excellence, wholeness, and health. We remember the year of its founding when the spirit of St. Louis flew the Atlantic and a bridge of peace connected us to our Canadian brothers and sisters. The same spirit of adventure and deepening connection of traversing that which was the vision of that which could be. Alive in the momentous happenings, alive on this ground, in this place, and continues now renewed and continually grounded in the generations that have passed through these doors of students and teachers, administrators, parents and family that through the course of time have left their mark on this world, in part because of what they experienced in this place. We would be remiss if we only dedicated a building today, for what we do is to remember again what has always been a part of this place, and invoke that creative spirit to continue to stir students and those who love them to learn and to grow to achieve excellence, and to serve without abandon all that love and life would have us remember. It is in this spirit of love and learning that we invoke here again this day. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Reverend. I'm going to welcome everybody. Uh, it's a wonderful day here at Nelson Place School. I'd like to welcome up the uh, principal for a welcoming, Monica Potras. Please come on up. Doing a great job up here, and uh, appreciate everything you're doing. Welcome, everybody, to this amazing school. I can't even begin to tell you how amazing it is. Um, there are two words that I think about daily as I drive in that describe um, Nelson Place here. And one of them is the excitement that I see. The excitement that I see in the staff and the students every morning as they walk in the building. The excitement that I see in the classrooms of the staff and the students using our new technology and weaving their way in and out of how to use it and how to turn it on or asking our students how we turn it on or how we use it. Um, I see the excitement in the kids' eyes that we have two playgrounds, one for pre-K to grade two and one for for grades three through six. 
Um, and in a few more weeks or another week or so, the rest of the playground is going to be open for grades three through six, the basketball court. So I can imagine the excitement that we will have. And then I think about the excitement that this building will create new memories for our students as they created in the old building. Um, the other word that I think about is the opportunities that we have here. The opportunities that we have never had before um, until this building was built. For example, whole school assemblies where you are all seated right now, every morning, every child, K through six, we meet in here and we do the Pledge of Allegiance as a whole community and then we begin our day. In our old school, we didn't have room to do that. So that's amazing that we're able to do those. And I think about the opportunities that we have for learning. Um, and I think about the opportunities in doing projects. So we were talking about, you know, many of us have done this. We bring home a trifold board and we're doing some content or subject. Now the students have opportunities and choices to maybe do a slideshow or we're going to be using Google Classroom or maybe they make an iMovie. But all these opportunities lead us to our career and, and college ready pathways. Um, I can't even tell you that I am truly the happiest principal in Worcester and probably of the United States because it is truly an amazing building. Um, and it's not just an amazing building because of the building but because of the community that's here. Um, we have huge support from our parents, from the teachers and the community at large and I can't be more grateful for all of that. I'd like to take just a few more minutes to thank um, some groups of people that with out their dedication to this project and when I talk about their level of dedication it's, it was very personal I feel to them. To the architects Lamoro and Pagano. I can't even tell you about the detail that was put into the school, the listening to the needs of the teachers, the needs of myself as an administrator, and the needs of the students. They took all these into consideration. Lam um, Fontaine Brothers and Tishman, I can't even say enough about, they go over and beyond what I expected, um, helping me with dismissal at the end of the day, um, which was not an expectation, or the, even this morning catching balloons that flew away. Um, just, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate everything that you have done to make this dream come true for all of us. Um, I'd also like to thank Mindy, um, who was our interior designer. I know she's here. I can't even tell you um, the countless hours that she spent helping me and listening to the needs that we had for furniture and the design of this down to the colors, um, researching colors and how colors affect students, um, looking at different seating to meet the needs of all the kids. Truly, I can't thank all those groups enough and everybody else that helped this. Um, I hope later that you will all sign up for tours. We will have refreshments after this in the cafeteria and there will be uh, papers where you can sign up for tours of the building. We'll be touring the A building and the C building. Um, and so I hope you sign up and thank you for coming today. Uh, please welcome back the Nelson Place Chorus, one extraordinary school. Chorus.
Absolutely beautiful, right? Give him another hand, the chorus, and uh... well, welcome everyone. Dreams do come true. And I remember standing here back in 2011 and uh, running for mayor with uh, former Superintendent John Durkin and, uh, in front of the school, making this a priority. Uh, the city council, the state, school committee, and uh, it's come true. I remember all the scaffolding and the pumps in the school, and we did the tour of the school. And, and this shows that there is a commitment here uh, from the uh, public officials uh, to make sure we have a good quality education because we have a wonderful teaching staff, of course, the teachers, the aides, the administrators who work hard every single day to make the school system better. And so our job as a city council is to make sure you have the uh, facilities to do it in. And we've done, we've done a great job doing that. And it's all about partners. It's all about partnerships because uh, I can't do it alone. City manager, superintendent can't do it alone. But I just want to thank uh, the school committee members who are here. Uh, Brian O'Connell, John Monfredo, Donna Corio, Maura McCullough, Diana B. and Caria, who are here today. Great partnership. Uh, from the City Council, we have uh, Gary Rosen, Sarai Rivera, Candy Carlson, Kate Toomey, Tony O'Connell, George Russell, Christian King, Connie Lukes, and Mo Bergman. To the hand. Thank you. From our state delegation, uh, John Mahoney, Mahoney and Senator Harry Chandler, who are here today. And of course, uh, Congressman James McGovern. Welcome, James. And uh, the person that uh, you can hold responsible for the new school also, Treasurer Deb Goldberg. And of course, City Manager Ed Augustus, who provides a lot of cash. <laughs> Well, I was saying uh, this building is a promise, a promise that will continue to invest in our students in the future of the city. We know that our students and our city as a whole succeed when we thoughtfully invest in our schools. And I really believe that from the bottom of our heart. And, uh, and this is why when Mayor Joel O'Brien, I'm not sure if he was able, he was going to try to be here today, but he pushed for this school right before the end of his term. And we carried through on that promise. And uh, my promise also is to build several new schools, and uh, whether it be South High School, Doherty High School, I know John Mahoney and Mo Berman pushed hard on Doherty High School to get that done, and uh, hopefully uh, the MSBA was in this week, past week, we're going to have Burncoat High School, so uh, there's two critical elements in, into the Worcester Public Schools, because neighborhoods make a difference, quality of life, people want to stay here for a few reasons, quality of schools, which are excellent, and also public safety, which we've invested heavily in. and. Uh, and of course, a lot of thank, thanks need to go out. I know some already, already said that, but the MSBA, Deb Goldberg, and Jack McCarthy will say, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your commitment to the city of Whistler. Since I've been mayor, Cotton, this school, which is $58 million, and it's a large school, bigger than the last, other, bigger than the last Nelson Place school, and uh, plus the windows and boilers and doors, another $50 million. You're talking over $100 million just in the last few years in the Worcester Public Schools. Then if you add on uh, North High School, the Technical High School, the future uh, South High School, the future uh, Burnt Authority High School, you're looking at half a billion dollars invested in the Worcester Public Schools. And uh, a lot of it couldn't be done without the city manager and the Worcester City Council who pays our share of the bill. So thank you, Mr. Augustus, city manager, and I appreciate it. And a lot... And a lot going to be done with the state delegation, Harry Chiel and John Mahoney, who are here, but it's a cooperative effort. If we didn't have Harry Chiel and John Mahoney uh, advocating every single day for the uh, Worcester Public Schools and the funding, we wouldn't be able to get it done. So thank you very much for getting that done. And I also want to thank uh, Tishman uh, Construction and uh, in the back over there, thank you very much. The school, the color scheme is awesome. The school is just awesome. Everybody's done a great job. Wermo Pagano, great job today. So I want to thank you for everything you're doing here today. And uh, I know I left someone out. Oh, left out Fontaine Brothers. Great job on the building. And uh, and also Paul Moosey and his whole Paul Moosey, you know, it's a tough job being head of public works. You take a lot of criticism, criticism, you take a lot of praise. But Paul, thank you for all the work you're doing here in the Worcester Public Schools. I appreciate it.
So I'm going to bring up, and I want to thank someone who put this program together. It was a dear friend of mine, Helen Frail, who works so hard every single day to make this happen. Like I was saying earlier, um, a great friend of the city of Worcester, who's been here a number of times, who cares greatly about this city, and understands what urban school districts need, and how important it is to invest in the public school system. Please welcome our treasurer, and don't forget, ever forget her, because she's committed to the city, Deb Goldberg. Okay, is that better? I was telling everybody, we can't hear anyone. I'll do it over. <laughs> no, don't do it over, Joe. Except the, part, except the part that you said, I've been here a number of times. How about hundreds of times? Sarai Rivera will tell you. So will Candy and Mo. So, first of all, can we hear it for those kids? Honestly. <laughs> you guys, over there. one more thing from you besides that beautiful song which I thought was amazing. Go Eagles! Come on, go Eagles! 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 <sighs> anyway, um, I, got, I must be psychically connected to this school. Mindy, where are you? The person who picked the colors. Is she here? <laughs> All right. Does everybody see what colors I'm wearing today? <laughs> Nobody sent me a memo. I did not get a phone call, but Ed Augustus and I, psychic, where are you, Ed? Right Stand here. up, show off your tie. <laughs> we are psychically connected to this school. And so I am thrilled to be here today. And you want to know why I'm thrilled to be here today? Not just because um, I get to hear Joe thank me, but because it's these kids. It's the little ones sitting in the back making the noise. And I saw a baby sleeping over here with his dad singing along with the song, by the way. And it is about them. MSBA sounds like this sort of authority that does buildings. Well, it's, that's not what the work is about. The work is about the mission of making sure that we create these environments where the teachers can teach kids the skills that they need to really get ahead in this 21st century Massachusetts. And that is not an easy task. So it's imperative that MSBA work with communities and get that job done. It's the mother in me that feels passionately about the work that we do at MSBA. And when I first met Joe and all the rest of the folks from here in Worcester, and we came together, and this was even before I was treasurer, what did they talk to me about? The schools, the schools, the schools. And so not only did we get to work on making sure, I mean, I went to Doherty before I was even elected in the middle of winter to see just how cold it was. And the senator was there with me and others. And we really get it. We get what the difference is. And then, of course, when I started my pilot program of seeding kindergarten kids' college savings accounts, it was Worcester that we chose to be our pilot. So I care deeply about this community. I am thrilled to be here today. I thank all the partners, whether you picked the colors, whether you chose the architect. I thank all of the folks who are involved in city government here and who represent you at the state level. And I very much thank MSBA for the work that they do behind the scenes every single day to make sure that you all get the quality schools that you all deserve. So thank you for having me here today. It's a thrill. And again, come on kids, go Eagles! Give me Eagles! Yes! Thank you, Madam Treasurer. 
Uh, next speaker, who uh, really provides the funding for the Worcester Public Schools and couldn't do with all of them, uh, and the support of the Worcester City Council, and Ed's been very involved with this school, and when it comes to the environmental concerns of the school, and he's come up with some good ideas, and he's going to talk about that a little bit. Please welcome up City Manager Edward Augustus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this really is an exciting day for the city of Worcester, and you're going to hear a lot of thank yous, but that's what dedications are for, because events like this don't happen by accident. They only happen when people work together with a common goal in mind, uh, and today is the fruit of that work together uh, to make today a reality. I want to thank the treasurer. Uh, as the mayor had mentioned, she and her team at the Mass School Building Assistance uh, have been so incredibly generous and focused on the city of Worcester and our needs here as a city, uh, and we benefit from that engagement and that interest. So thank you, Treasurer Goldberg, and thank you to your whole team. I want, to, I want to especially thank my bosses, uh, Mayor Petty and the members of the Worcester City Council. Um, we have a lot of contentious debates sometimes in the City Council, but the one thing that brings them together in one unified voice is the importance of our public schools and investing in education and investing in kids. Uh, and it's because of that commitment that we're here today. Uh, and I want to thank the Mayor and the members of the City Council. And a special thank you uh, to Councilor Economou, who has been with this project every step of the way. Every meeting, every, every issue that came up as this school was being planned, he was right there to shepherd it through the process. So thank you to all of them uh, for getting us here today. I want to thank my partner in, in city government, the superintendent of schools. She's an amazing uh, advocate for young people. She knows the system inside and out. She knows all of the needs of this uh, Worcester Public Schools, and she's a great advocate for all of us. Uh, and I want to thank her and the great members of the Worcester School Committee uh, for coming together and working in partnership with us on the city side. I want to thank Fontaine. Tishman, Lamoureux, Pagano. This is an amazing group of professionals who came together and designed this school. They didn't just put up a cookie cutter school. They looked at the specific needs of this school and this city. There are special designs in the classrooms and the spaces to deal with the kids who are going to be served in this school. They took a lot of effort and time to make sure we got it right. And this group of folks not only made sure we have the great school that we have today, but they were so committed, they became so vested in the kids in the school and what's happening in the school. They amongst themselves raised money to make sure that we're going to have a recreation Worcester program that's going to take place in the school because of the donations of Tishman, Lamoureux, Pagano, uh, and Fontaine. So a big round of applause because we're going to have free after school programs because of them. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Mr. Chadwick for his service to our country. 94 years old, served in General Patton's army in, in Europe. Amazing, the kind of dedication of the greatest generation personified in Mr. Chadwick here. Uh, and we all wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him and the greatest generation. Thank you. And then the mayor mentioned, and I, I just want to take a moment uh, to thank Commissioner Paul Moosey and Assistant Commissioner Russ Adams, uh, two people who people might not be fully aware were responsible for working with that team I talked about every step of the way. They sweated over every issue that went into the design of the school and the construction of the school and the opening of the school. And I would tell you this for the taxpayers of Worcester. This school came in more than $2 million under budget. And it is the first school in Massachusetts to be completely energy independent. That's a good thing for the environment. It's a good thing for the taxpayers of this city. This project was funded $33 million by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and $25 million by the people of Worcester. That combination and looking out not only for the educational program, but for the cost of the, the construction and the long-term term sustainability
stability of this building, I think is a testament to all of the team that came together, so I want to thank them. I want to thank our legislative delegation, Senator Chandler and, and Representative Mahoney leading the way. Uh, if it weren't for them advocating for the funding and the resources necessary, the treasurer and her team wouldn't have uh, the money to work with. Uh, I almost fell off the chair when the mayor promised seven more schools. Uh, <laughs> So we got a lot of work to do, um, but we have a lot of needs to, to meet. I guess, finally, I just want to say, at the end of the day, the biggest thank you has to go to the principal and to the teachers and the staff first for suffering through many years in that old building. Think about it, it's like traveling in time, leaving in June that old building, and then coming to school at the end of August in this building. It's literally like traveling 100 years, the space that you had to work in previously and now have an opportunity to teach and educate in. I want to thank the parents for their patience and their perseverance. I want to thank the neighbors of this neighborhood for their patience and perseverance through this whole process. At the end of the day, all of those people came together and worked hard and dedicated and sacrificed because this school is going to be dedicated to these kids and to all the kids that come behind them. At the end of the day, kids are 20% of our population. They're 100% of our future. And today is a testimony to our belief and our faith in the future of Worcester and in these kids. Congratulations. Uh, please welcome up our next speaker who's been superintendent for two years now and uh, who's doing a wonderful job for the students, for the teachers, and making this uh, school system bring it to the next level. Please welcome Superintendent Maureen Benenda. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I want to thank also um, all our federal, state, city elected officials, uh, the representatives from MSBA that are here today, uh, Debbie Goldberg, the community leaders for their support of the Nelson Place School. It really is inspirational and rewarding to work and live in Worcester, a city that places education of all of our students as a priority. I also want to thank uh, Lamro and Pagano Architects and Associates, Tishman Construction, and Fontaine Brothers for providing a very personal commitment to building the best school for Nelson Place. Their ded dedication in working with the principal in meeting every request for the quality of every space has really been exemplary. I want to thank the principal, Monica Potras. She thought of every need of the Nelson Place students, right to including the right furniture throughout the school. Thank you to the Nelson Place staff, whose enthusiasm is contagious. Teachers, continue your commitment to excellence. Integrate now technology into your lessons. Plan and share best practice in your new common places. It is you, in partnership with Nelson Place parents, community members, who will set the course for success of our students. Nelson Place students, Prepare for your future careers by choosing to be present and learn every day. Learn about science in your new science labs. Read books from your new library. Investigate and research using your new technology. Explore the arts. Build your physical fitness in your new gym. Enjoy healthy nutrition in your new cafeteria, and include your classmates in all resource a in recess activities in your new playground area. Nelson Place parents, your participation and support is deeply appreciated. Thank you for your support of Nelson Place through all the new school preparation activities, your special school events, and your fundraisers. Continue to be an active part of the fabric of this beautiful new school. This exemplary new building with a dedicated staff, talented students, supportive parents and community partners will continue to lead the way for exceeding the dreams and expectations for the children of Worcester. We can only imagine how it's going to change the world. Thank you.
Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, please welcome our next speaker who uh, has represented presented this district for a number of years as a state representative, as a school community member, and of course in leadership right now in the, in the Senate, who cares greatly, and without Senator Chandler and the state delegation, the school, this school would not be built. Please welcome Senator Chandler. You know, when I came here this morning, and I made the turn into the driveway. It almost took my breath away because suddenly we went from a building that was built in 1927 to a modern, up-to-date, state-of-the-art building that's going to last, I hope it won't be another 90 years, but who knows, it was built to be able to do that and it, it can do that. I, I want to thank everyone that's already been thanked, uh, Lamoureux and Pagano, uh, Fontaine Brothers, Tishman Construction, we thank you so much. I especially want to thank the, the parents and the children who have been here and who have gone through the ups and downs of a new school that isn't quite there for you yet, uh, but especially the faculty, the staff of this school. You've put up with a lot and the quality of your education has never, never swerved, never. You've kept that quality up always. This is one of those schools that people move into this neighborhood to be able to attend Nelson Place School. Am I correct? A lot of you are here just because of this school. Uh, there are a lot of people who should be thanked to make this possible and we look forward to the next 90, 100, 120 years. But there's a special person in the state delegation that I want to thank, and I think all of us owe him a debt of gratitude, and that's my colleague, John Mahoney. John Mahoney, when he became the state representative, had a child here, had two children, I guess, at that time, and John started to complain because he saw firsthand what how difficult it was to have the quality of education that children in this school system deserved, children in this school deserved. And he started to complain and complain and complain. And you know, it's a funny thing. Squeaky wheels do get oiled. And he complained so much that people started to pay attention. And sooner or later, MSBA started to pay attention and you got on the list. And I think a lot of time and, and thought went into his work. And quite frankly, I want to say thank you to, to John Mahoney. But I think all of us should say thank you to John Mahoney. <laughs> and so on behalf of the Senate, I would be happy if the principal would come up here. By the way, we always love to see MSBA come here because they either come bearing checks or able to see the, 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 the good things that happen as a result of their work, and this is certainly one of them. And so I am pleased to present from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts from the State Senate an official citation that reads as follows. Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Nelson Place School in re recognition of the momentous occasion of the dedication of the new school building. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success, that this citation be, built, be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to in a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. It's been signed by the Senate President, Stan Rosenberg, attested to by our Clerk of the Senate, William F. Welch. And on this, the 15th day of October, I am so pleased to be able to present this to you as the Senator for the school. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, our next speaker has been said, uh, who really did a lot of advocation for the school every day with the MSBA, meet with them on a regular basis to make sure WIST is well represented. Please welcome your uh, State Representative, John Mahoney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. And uh, thank you, Senator Chandler, for those lovely words. Uh, I'd love to have you come over to my house and talk to my wife for a little bit. Um, 
But anyways, uh, you know, every journey starts with the first step. And uh, when I was elected, I was able to uh, meet with uh, then Treasurer Grossman. And I told him about Nelson Place. And you know, he's a pro. And he said, you know, I'll be right out. And uh, within a few weeks, he was out here with Mr. McCarthy, who's with us today. Jack came out with the Treasurer. And the Treasurer, w they showed up outside. They looked. And uh, Mr. McCarthy said, uh, when he looked at the scaffolding, he said, they've already begun construction. I said, no, no, that's... Uh, <laughs> It's, that, that's, that's what this place is like. And uh, <laughs> once the, the treasurer and, and Mr. McCarthy started, uh, you know, we said hello, we brought everyone into the school, we took a little tour. And I'll never forget being in the basement of the old Nelson Place School. And uh, the principal, uh, Mr. Grossman, said, What are, what are these? What are these uh, what's this? And, and they were jacks holding up the floor. And Steve just said, I've seen enough. We're going to make this happen. So, you know, that's how this happens. We get the right people in. And um, later in the afternoon, I saw uh, uh, Harriet met us, the, the senator. And she said to the treasurer, oh, hi, Stephen. Oh, hi, Harley. How are you? And you could see that they've known each other for a long time. And uh, on building on that relationship, now we have Treasurer Goldberg, who is uh, a friend of uh, Mr. Bergman, who's on the council, the senator as well, and has become a good friend to many of us. And we're going to take the next step. We've put on South High School, Doherty High School, and there's not many uh, schools in the city that have not been touched in some way, shape, or form by the MSBC Bay uh, and what they have done. So I'm very grateful for their help. Um, elections matter. These relationships that we build year in, year in matter. Uh, thank you to the students for being here today, the, the choir. Thank you to the parents. You know, I was thinking about Mr. Chadwick uh, today, where he came here in the 1930s as a student. And um, the people who ran the city back then, they provided all these things for us. And now it's our turn to do the same. So once again, thank you, everyone. Thank you for all who have been involved in this project. And have a great afternoon. Thanks. Thank you, John. Uh, our next speaker, uh, Jack McCarthy, who's the uh, Deputy Chief Executive Officer and Director of the MSBA, who's in this, the Treasurer's been here hundreds of times. He's probably been here thousands of times to listen to, and, and to the school and visiting all our schools. In fact, the MSBA was here last week, I said earlier, at, at Burncoat. I remember when I was first year as mayor when we did the bus tour and we, of several schools, Doherty and uh, South High School, but also our first stop was at this school, and we invited the treasurer here, and uh, and we they went through this like John was saying, and they couldn't believe the condition of the school, which is very helpful when you want to build a new school. But Jack's been a good friend of Worcester, and I want to thank him personally, and him and Matt Donovan, who are also works on MSBA, for everything they do for the city of Worcester. Please welcome Jack McCarthy. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this. You know, um, this is the favorite part of my job, is I get to see the, the fruits of the labor of, of what we do. And, um, you know, the mission of the Mass School Building Authority is to partner with Massachusetts communities to support the design and construction of educationally appropriate, flexible, sustainable, and cost-effective public school facilities. And this project exceeds that ideal. Uh, Benjamin Franklin once said, an investment in education pays the best interest. And we at the MSBA are proud to be your investing partners to the tune of $33 million for this project. But overall, since 2004, we've participated with $294 million for the city of Worcester since 2004. I think that's just incredible. And that doesn't happen without a legislative delegation like John Mahoney and, and, and Holly Chandler. Um, as a matter of fact, during, the, uh, during somebody's speech, she turns to me and says, so, uh, burn coat, right? You know, we're not even finished celebrating here, and she's already working on me for the next one. So that's the type of, of uh, leaders that you have up at Beacon Hill for you. So I want to thank John and Harley for their leadership. So thank you. And ev everybody's mentioned, your, you know, the, the, the Lamarro Pagano, Tishman, Fontaine brothers, but... Stop and think about how you got those guys. And that was the leadership here. That's who selected that team. So, you know, to Maureen, Joe, and Ed, unbelievable job of selecting a great team. So thank you. <laughs> and if I could just have, because I know Lamarro Pagano's here, Fontaine's here, and Tishman's here. Could you guys just stand up for a sec?
So everybody in Worcester is really proud, as they should be, that this uh, project came in on time and under budget. But when I saw that team, I had no doubt in my mind that that was going to be the result of this. Why? Because that's what they do for me project after project. So I thank you guys for caring about the taxpayers of Massachusetts. So thank you. Uh, let me see. Where is he? Rich Hudson. Uh, Rich Hudson and Maria Popolo from my office decided that to, what they wanted to do the most on t this Sunday was come out here and see you guys, so please stand. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's the dedication that these folks have. <clears throat> you know, I, I am a parent, so I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but I do have a favorite in the, in the city team here, and it's my old friend Kate Toomey and I grew up together in the, the other holy name, the holy name in West Roxbury, Massachusetts. So Kate and I were, I've known Kate since probably the third grade or something like that, but I was, it was so good to reconnect with her back in 20, uh, 2012 when we first came out here. So it's great to see my old friend Kate. Um, last thing, um, I have to agree with the treasurer. That uh, song number one was awesome. So what I'd love you to do, if you could, is um, can you video that and get releases? Because I'd love to put that on my website and, and, and so that everybody could see it. So if you could do that, I would appreciate it. And I'll play it at the next board meeting, too, as well, because that was something. That was really something. I was very impressed. Uh, and I'll, I'll just, just leave you with uh, Dan Valentine was a, a reporter for the Salt Lake City Tribune, and he once described a school as a building of four walls with tomorrow inside. And I'm very proud to be as part of the tomorrow for Nelson Place. Thank you very much. Uh, before I bring on our next group of speakers for remarks, I just want to thank, there was a committee that was formed as soon as uh, the school was uh, approved by the MSBA. It was myself, it was City Manager Michael O'Brien at that time, Jim Bedard from the Facilities Director, uh, Superintendent Boone, Tony O'Connell, Jack Foley, school committee member, Phil Jaruso, Pam Landry, Jessica McGuire, Elizabeth O'Connell, Pamela Padilla, uh, Michael Rodriguez, Allison Vigent, Tom Zadellis, Christian McCarthy, John Orell, Paul Moosey, and uh, Brian Allen. So we had nice neighborhood teachers and city officials. I want to thank them for their dedication to get this school done. And uh, our next speaker, who, uh, who has a tough job, I think, and uh, who's a parent, teacher, organizer, and a former student, uh, please welcome Laura Clancy. On behalf of the families of Nelson Place, I just wanted to take a brief moment to thank everybody for this new Nelson Place building. As an alumna of Nelson Place, I was sad to see the old building coming down, but as a parent of a current student, I am beyond thrilled for the opportunity for our children to be educated in such an innovative school. It is beyond amazing to see a building that encompasses all of our children's learning styles. This is now a school building that many generations will be able to thrive in. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And uh, our next speaker uh, who dedicated his life to the Worcester Public Schools and has done a wonderful job as a school community member and as a principal, former principal, please welcome John Monfredo, school community member. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Being at Nelson Place this afternoon is coming home for me for my two children attended Nelson Place and my lovely wife, Anne Marie, not only did her student teaching here, but also spent 15 years as a first grade teacher here. Uh, she loved her children and had uh, parents in her room each and every day. And I also remember her bringing fans to a classroom in the wintertime because her room was 90 degrees because they couldn't control the, uh, the heat from one end of the building to the other end of the building. So I'm sure she's pretty thrilled about uh, the new building. The new building, as you well know, is certainly is a state of the arts and will benefit our children for many, many years to come. It's a showpiece for education and it's probably one of the best schools built in Massachusetts. But we all need to remember that it's not only bricks and mortar that make a school, but having a staff 
and parents working in partnership for the benefit of our children. We need to remember that parents are the child's first and most influential teachers, and we as educators need to make sure they're part of the learning process. I believe that here at Nelson Place, we have that special ingredient. And I look forward to visiting Nelson Place in the future to see the many special events taking place and hear about your many successes. Good luck on this very, very special year. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, our next speaker is the district councilor here who will be wrapping up his career as a district councilor. Uh, he's done a wonderful job, was dedicated to make sure the school was built under budget and built on time and, uh, and built to the specifications of the community and what they wanted. Please welcome Tony O'Connor. Good afternoon, everybody. I will keep my remarks short. Um, so I'm trying to think, I was trying to think back how long my kids were here. It's probably, uh, they graduated maybe six, seven years ago. So we went back maybe 13, 14 years ago. And when we came here was when they first erected the fence around the school. Now as a realtor, you can imagine when families say, hey, you know what, we want to send our kids to Nelson Place School, we want to live in this part of the city, and then they would take a drive by the school, and well, as soon as they saw the fence, that was about the end of that conversation. So, um, for me, our experience couldn't have been any better. And really, you heard about the architects, the designers, the builders, all of us in politics who, who made this happen. But really, it's you. It's the staff, the teachers, the custodians, the parents, the kids. This is a building. It has all the technical advances that we all have and want for our kids and for ourselves. And, but without all of us, it's just a building. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you all for being a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. You're going to be missed, so uh, congratulations to you. Um, our next speaker, this school couldn't be done without our next speaker. And this is why Worcester, I think, is so successful now with the partnerships that we have. Uh, Sumption College was able to give us some land and do an easement to get this school built. Please welcome the president of Sumption College, Francesco Cesareo, to the uh, podium. Thank you. When the city approached Assumption College seeking land for the construction of this new Nelson Place School, we did not hesitate for a moment. As an institution of learning in Worcester, we have a responsibility to make meaningful contributions in support of bold initiatives that enhance education, including at the elementary level, where students are first introduced to the lifelong rewards of learning. New learning spaces, in particular a new school building, foster enthusiasm. Enthusiastic teachers, enthusiastic students, enthusiastic staff, and enthusiastic families. And one can sense in this building that excitement and that renewed commitment to learning at Nelson Place thanks to this new building, which is a tangible example of the commitment of the city to education, and also an example of how institutions of higher education, such as Assumption College, can collaborate with the city to realize exciting projects. But there's also another group of students that are very excited about this building, and that's Assumption College students, because each semester, we have students from Assumption who are in our education program who come to a, a Nelson Place for their student teaching experience. And so this is their first opportunity to put into practice what they have learned in their previous three and a half years. And our athletic teams do volunteer hours here at the school each semester. So it's a great partnership between these two institutions here in this city of Worcester. I'd like to say a few words to the students of Nelson Place School. This new building now opens up opportunities that 
provide you with options that perhaps you never imagined. Here your teachers will share with you information that will prepare you for lifelong learning. And someday some of you may become astronauts or pilots or governors or presidents, who knows. But your future starts right here in this beautiful new building. At Assumption we look forward to increased opportunities to collaborate with you here at Nelson Place and with the other educational institutions here in the city. On behalf of Assumption College, congratulations to everyone who is part of this Nelson Place community. Thank you. Our next speaker, which our schools can be built without, and it uh, has a great staff, engineers, to make sure, uh, sure our schools are built on time, under budget, or on budget, and has a great reputation of building schools. Please welcome Paul Mosley, Commissioner of the Public Works. It was in uh, 2005 when uh, city reorganized government a little bit and they moved the architectural division from the code department then to public works and that's when I inherited that uh, piece. The first job I did in 2005 when I took that division over was shoring up the old Nelson place. And uh, yeah, we made it safe but frankly I wanted it to go then. Uh, and, and I remember um, Mayor Petty just talked about the school committee. I remember the first meeting, I mean the building committee, the first meeting of that building committee for, for Nelson Place was in the old school, I believe it was the fall of 2012. And I'm looking out the back window at the hill saying, let's find another site. This is going to be a challenge to try to build here. Well, we couldn't find another site, so we ended up staying here. Um, I know a lot's been spoken about the team, but as the one in charge of building buildings, I can't not speak about them. Uh, I learned in my 30 plus years of building public infrastructure that good projects come from good plans. We couldn't have got any better than what our LPA delivered. And even with good plans, you need somebody to build them. I've never worked with a more professional staff than what Fontaine delivered. There's a company that makes contractors look good. I know some of them, their reputations are that way. They care about their work. And Tishman, I see Eric's back there. <coughs> I couldn't be out here every day. They were out here every day, making sure there was no problems, looking at the quality, any issues that came up, I knew I could count on them to bring them forward. Yeah, City Manager Augustus came on when the wheels were already turning on this project. But you couldn't ask for more support, whether it's working with our great neighbors at Assumption or our quest for zero net energy, all the things that we had to go through, he was 100% behind this because he cares about giving the best facilities he can to our children. And he does that on all our school projects. You know, lastly, when it's all said and done, we built the building. Um, Without the superintendent, the principal, all the teachers, and all that goes into the educational program, the building doesn't function the way it was intended. So I'm pretty confident that they'll take over. We're handing them the keys today. They'll take over this and, uh, and, and make a, a good school out of it. I think future DPW engineers and architects and scientists and commissioners will start their education right here. Thank you. Okay, for the moment everybody we're waiting for, we're going to do the unveiling of the plaque and uh, we'll welcome up the superintendent of the schools, the uh, city manager, uh, sc uh, school committee, and uh, all right.
Okay, before we have the, approach the end of the program here, just remind everybody there's going to be uh, refreshments will be served and tours will be provided from the cafeteria if people want to go there. And before I bring up the Reverend Richard Wimero, I'd just like to uh, again thank everybody for being here today. Uh, thank everybody who's been a, a guest or who's been a speaker. It's your school, so enjoy every minute of it. And uh, so again, I want to thank the chorus. Let's give a chorus one more good hand here. And also, let's give a nice hand to Edwin Chadwick, who served our country and has been part of this community for 94 years. Mr. Chadwick. And uh, Ms. Portress, good luck to you. It's a beautiful school. Enjoy every minute, and the students are going to love it. So, uh, and the teachers, too, thank you very much. And uh, please welcome the very Reverend Richard Lamro, uh, Vice President of the Mission, Assumption College. Permit me just one personal remark. When I was a kid about their age, I dreamt of being an architect. I followed another path, but I did do a PhD in architectural history at New York University. But I was always happy that there was at least one Richard Lamoureux that became an architect and founded a great firm <laughs> in the city of Worcester. So thank, I'm really happy to be here with you today and all of you. Uh, Following the spirit of this whole gathering, I thought we might end with a prayer of gratitude. We thank you, Lord, source of all good things. We thank you for the resources that made it make it possible to provide the best education for our young people. We thank you for the teachers, the administration, the staff who give so generously of themselves to shape the minds and hearts of those in their care. We thank you for parents who collaborate energetically in the education of their daughters and sons. We thank you finally for this beautiful new structure. We simply ask that it inspire and facilitate the challenging task to which we here and next door at Assumption are committed. The education of young people to a life of learning, of virtue, of fruitful work, and of service to others. Keep these young people always in your care. Grant these prayers, Father, that we present to you with hope and confidence. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Enjoy the school, enjoy the tours, and uh, enjoy the Patriots. We'll see you.